Hello and welcome to our Code for Kids course on my first game learning JavaScript. Today we will be looking at lesson number two of Test the Dog. I'm going to take you through the entire lesson from beginning to end, giving you all the teacher tips and tricks that you're going to need to be able to teach this like an expert. Last week we got introduced to Test the Dog and the coding language of JavaScript and there were only three, three commands that Tess knows how to do. And that is move, turn left, and put the ball. So what we've got here are her three functions, move, turn left, and put ball. We spoke about that the B and the L have to be capital, and we called that camel case, uh, because there's a little bump in the middle. So if you want to call it camel case capital for your learners. So now what we're looking at is turning left. Now remember, now remember last time is that we had to turn left, turn left, turn left in order for Tess to turn right. And so what students hopefully were asking and what you sort of pushed them to do was to get them to, to go down the long way and then ask, I wonder if there's a shorter way to do this. I wonder what kind of solution we can come up with. And functions are exactly that. We introduced the learners into functions today and they are a way to teach Tess new words. So we don't know how to turn right, and that is the problem that Tess has. So if she wants to, she's facing north at the moment, and you want to go straight to east, um, she can't turn right, she would have to go turn left, turn left, turn left. And that takes up a whole lot of code and a whole lot of time. So today we are going to teach Tess to turn right. So turning left three times is the same as turning right, and this is the function that we are now going to define. So when we write our function turn right, we actually have to give the command and add the function to our code. So what we've got here is turn left, turn left, turn left, which is great, called turn right. But now we need to add this function. And so we're going to say function turn right parentheses and then these curly parentheses or curly brackets. And we're going to define it um, below our function instruction and then we're going to be able to call this function turn right. So two important uh, definitions there. Calling a function is when you use it under your function instructions. So last week we were calling move, we were calling put ball, we were calling turn right. And today we are going to define the function turn right and then we're going to call it under function instructions. Here in the quiz we have a little quiz for the learners and they can circle the correct answer. How many times should Tess turn left in order to turn right? And we know that that is three. And what can we use to teach Tess to turn right? Variables, functions, dogs, treats, or instructions. And it's going to be functions. All right, moving on to task number zero. Remember, this task is for you to go through with your learners to get them understanding exactly what we want and what we've got planned for this lesson. So go through it nice and slowly. Remember to ask them some leading questions. Here we go. Notice, function instructions is where your story for tests can be told when you press play. New function instructions are added after closing the function with the curly bracket. What we are talking about over here is that Underneath your function instructions is the story that Tess is going to follow. So if we press play, she's going to move, put ball, move, put ball, move. Then she's going to turn left three times, which is a turn right. Well, she needs to turn right so that she doesn't hit into the wall. And so what we're going to do after this closed parenthesis, after we've told the story of Tess, is we're going to define new functions. Our, our task zero is press play and see what happens. Remove all the turn left commands to a single turn right function. Make sure you define the function correctly, and we've started this for you in line 33. So we want to remove all of these, and we're going to delete them, and we're going to call it turn right. So that is called calling a function when it is under the function instructions between the curly parentheses. Defining a function is below the function instructions, over here in line 31, and we've got turn left, and now we know if we're going to complete our calling turn right here, we need to say turn left and again turn left. So that is defining our function turn right and then we are calling the function in line 16 and we're calling the function again in line 23. And then we ask to run the instructions. So let's follow Tess. 
she's going to move, put ball, move, put ball, move, put ball, turn right. Oh, I've seen a mistake here. I spelled turn left with a capital E, and that's why she didn't go around. Three times, she only went around twice. Brilliant. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we've got balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Okay, that is the end of task zero, what you would have done together, and now you can do task one on their own. Complete the function turn right and get test to drop balls like task 1.1 in the answer tab. All right, so we go to our answer tab now, we've got 1.1, it's quite a nice a little figure there. And let's see what she's doing. Oh, we don't have a turn right at the moment, so we're going to define that first. In between the curly brackets. And now we're going to move, put ball, turn left, move, turn right, put ball, move, put ball, turn left, move, put ball. Let's see what that looks like. All right. Um, over the last week, Tess has learned to take ball. Once she has dropped all the balls, get her to pick the balls up and move back to her starting position. Okay, this is exciting. So we're going to get Tess to do a 180, so either turn left or turn right twice. We're then going to move her, take ball, move, take ball. Okay, let's see. I'm going to start copy and pasting here. Your learners probably won't be doing this yet, but you can. Let's have a look where we are there. Awesome, so now I need to, I'm um, facing south, need to move east. So again, your learners can stand up and do this, face south, and then turn to face, sorry, west, and that'll be to turn left. Then gonna move, put ball, turn right, sorry, take ball, turn right, move, take ball. And that should be everything. Sorry, I've got this messed up. This should be a turn left function. Let's try one more time. Oh, final take ball. All right, and then you can take ball in that last bit and we will be done. Okay, task number two. Make test drop balls around the edge of the grid. See task two in the answer tab. Hint, make a turn right function to help you. It's because Tess is starting in your um, top left hand block of the grid. She's only going to be making right turns. And so we really need this function turn right. We're getting good at this function turn right now. We are going to define it underneath the function turn right. And then we're going to call it wherever there were three turn lefts. Right, I've got two, so I'd add two more balls there. Turn right again four balls, turn right, and then only three balls. And I'll be finished just like the answer tab in task number two. I'm not gonna go through that whole thing for you because the code is exactly the same. Remember, if you need to make yourself some space, you just press enter. If you delete this curly bracket, um, everything will go away. So that curly bracket, closing up the function instructions is obviously really important and a common error that learners make. So if, they, if their test does go away, something's gone wrong, but most of the time it's because they've deleted that curly bracket somewhere. Okay, task number three. We are making some triple towers, let's see. Making some triple towers in task three, and we are going to build a new function. So this function is called build tower, and we're gonna define that function over here, and then we will call it over here. So you can, say we, you can see we've moved, we've turned left, we've built a tower. Now our tower is four balls, here we've only got two balls, so we need another move, put ball, move, put ball. So now it's running, move, turn left, build tower. Awesome, and we're gonna make three of those. So we haven't done anything there. We're then going to, right, so thereafter, build tower, I'm gonna turn right, I'm going to move, I'm going to turn around, and then I'm going to build the tower again, but this time facing a downwards direction or facing south. Fantastic. And then in, a, in the same way, now I'm facing south, I want to face east, I'm going to, I would um, turn left, move, turn left, build tower. So what we're trying to do here is show the learners that 
creating a function has saved us so much time. Instead of having to do a move, put ball, move, put ball, move, put ball every time I want to build a tower, I can just create one function called build tower and then thereafter it all works. So remember that is defining a function and the function instructions, it's called calling a function. And we are done. Okay, and then finally we move on to the challenge. Remember this part is always to really push your learners further, those who want to be pushed. And if the others don't get you, that's also okay. But what we're trying to do here, make tests, fill the grid with balls in as few lines of code as possible. Hint, you can define as many functions as you need. Now remember, we've got this function turn right, and any other function we want, probably a nice function to create is the function full row. And you've got to copy it exactly, make sure you've got parentheses, make sure it goes blue, and a full row function here would obviously be put, put ball, move, put ball, move, and you've got to do that seven times. So we could fill that, and then do full row, turn left, turn left, full row, turn right, turn right, full row. So that could be one. You could also um, probably have a function called full grid, and then you're only using one line of code. Um, and so what we've done here in the challenge is we've created some levels. So to see how your learners go, if they do um, one line of code, sorry, if they do 200 plus lines of code, they get, they just get one point and then Level two is 100 to 200 lines. Level three is 50 to 100 lines of code. And level four is less than 50 lines of code. So remember, we start counting the code in between the function instructions. All right, that is the end of lesson number two. We really hope you enjoy teaching the lesson and that your learners have fun doing it. All the best.